Abby here with Scrap and Abby, and welcome to day two, which is Sunday, October 2nd, for my national, or not national, I apologize, I keep saying that, for my Trigeminal Neuralgia Awareness Week video series that I'm doing. The official day for Trigeminal Neuralgia Awareness, which is national, that is on Friday, October 7th. It's always October 7th every year. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm trying my hand at making some planner book charms and um, bookmarks for my different pain journals that I have and also making some up so I can kind of switch them out and everything. So these are the, this is just kind of the collection of um, supplies I'm going to be using and I'm trying this out. So if you're watching this and you have not seen my prior TN um, week-long series, please go ahead and check that out on my channel. Everything's going to be in my brain surgery slash trigeminal neuralgia um, playlist on my um, YouTube channel. And I'm going to go ahead and get everything kind of set up. And then I actually let me share with you real quick before I do that, just really quickly. I'm going to be using some items like this is a pair of eyeglass cording that I got at the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to be um, incorporating some of this because it's a really pretty teal color. Just a variety of some different. Um, these I got at Lobster Claws. I got this from Tuesday morning. The rest of this stuff, I think, yeah, it's all actually from Walmart. Just some different seed beads and acrylic bead mix here. And then I have some split rings to add all the different um, charms on. This isn't necessarily for the, um, I might use this in the bookmarks. I don't know. We'll see. But this is maybe to use as some planner. Uh, planner. <laughs> I tried to say planner and band at the same time. Um, new word Abby just made up um, as some different um, planner bands or things like that for my pain journals that I have just some cording because I'm a purple girl so even though this is going to be tea and awareness I might throw in some pops of purple because that's representative of me and then these are just some various beads and things that I found in the clearance section at Walmart and some caps and things like that so those are these are the supplies I'm going to be using for this and I have a few of my different um, tools over here so I'm going to tell you ladies right now I am really, really, really struggling today with speaking, but I am determined to put up a video every single day for my seven day series that I um, had mentioned to all of you. So I'm going to be a little stuttery. I'm going to um, maybe not sound as hyper or, you know, as, hey guys, like that, even though I want to be that way because I'm just really hurting today. So, um, but I'm going to push through. So just want to throw that disclaimer. So I'll be back once I get everything kind of set up and then we're going to make some bookmarks and book uh, planner charms. So I'll see you in just a little bit. Okay ladies, I have everything set up and I'm ready to share with you the bookmark charms that I've already made and then I'm going to make one on camera with all of you just in case you are wondering how I do it. Now, um, I don't know if I mentioned this in the first part of the video, but this is not an original idea. This is something that's been out there for years and years and years. I'm just showing you how I'm going to make mine to use in my pain journaling for my trigeminal neuralgia and anesthesia dolorosa. So this is my Foxy Fix and I will put a card up in the, I think it's the Hmm, this side, I think it's over here where it does it. It doesn't matter. Anyway, a card for my um, videos from yesterday about some how I decorate my um, pain journals. But this is an example of one of the bookmark charms I just made. And I wanted to kind of let you see that so you can see how it dangles off. Now you can adjust the length however much you want. I played with three different lengths. This one I really like. I have another one where it hangs down just a little bit longer and one is just a teensy tiny bit too short. So I'm going to use it in one of my other planners. But I just wanted to kind of play with the length and see what I liked. So that's how it looks, you know, when it's in a notebook um, itself. And this, that's one of the charms I made. This is another one I played around with using the lighter, kind of the teal colored cording. And I made this one matchy matchy thought that was really cute and it's just using a combination and now some of these bead caps you're like oh I didn't see those before I pulled from my stash that I have um, from prior orders and stuff so this one here is on kind of the natural and I like this one a lot and um, I just like the simplicity of just the stacked beads like that this is a um, charm I've had for quite some time I have two one it says journey and the other side is just a really pretty pattern and then I love this glass bead here I think that one is just, or acrylic I don't think that's yeah, it's like, it's like a marble, whatever that's made from. But I, um, I think that's really pretty. I like that a lot. And then this one's matchy-matchy. And I think it looks really cute. This is the first one I made. So it's fine because you can make them matchy-matchy or you can interchange them like I did. It just kind of what you want to do. What I do like to do, though, if I'm using like a charm, like um, this one here, or like a word, you know, charm, I do like to try to make the other side not um, so busy just so I don't have to like they're competing against each other. But that does not mean you can't make them both that way. It's total preference. And I probably will make some that are 
you know, really super chunky because I do like that look as well. Now this is a really fun one. Um, this is one I just put together. So as you ladies know, I'm a purple girl, so this is some of the purple cording. So to incorporate the teal, which is the awareness of the color for trigeminal neuralgia, I incorporated teal elements onto the purple cording. So these are just a mix of the beads. Again, I kept the, I kept the side simple. This is a really cute bird cage charm that I purchased um, from Hopscotch Crafts on Etsy, I believe. And I love this little feather. It's just kind of playing off the bird cage and the feather. I thought that was cute. And then I put some seed beads inside here because this is how the bird charm comes. It's not does not have a base in it like I can stick my finger on it and as you can see it's see-through there's nothing in there it's empty here I'll do that you can see it's empty right so on mine you can see that there's some seed beads in there and I'll share with you um, how I did that I'm not going to show it on camera but I'll share with you what I did now um, I don't have a punch or a um, my what you know my like you know hand punches or any of my other punches like this I just knocked everything off um, these kind of you know handheld ones I don't have one that's the perfect diameter for this so I just made I just made do with what I had so what I did is I took a piece of acetate there it is and what I have is this where did that ink go I just used this color box um, it's just the platinum it's the chalk inks and all I did was just gently tap this on the bottom of it because I knew if for some reason it dried on there before I got to wipe this off that that I wouldn't care because it, it matches the material so I just kind of did a little quick tap like that took this and then I just kind of stamped it on there really quickly like that and then I took my heat tool and kind of dried it for a quick second not long because it will melt warp this and then I just cut a, um, what I did is I cut around or excuse me I cut on the inside of that circle because that's the perfect size now I don't know how I'm gonna show this to you um, let's see if I have something that's dark enough maybe you can see that set circle right there that's that's the inside of the circle from when I put it on there. Does that make sense? See what I'm saying? And so there's a little lip in there. I'm not sure if you can see it. There's a little ledge and that's where that piece of acetate is pushed into and it's holding up those seed beads. Now how I got it to stay there, it probably would have stayed just with the pressure of it because I got it popped in there pretty good, but I wanted to make sure so I didn't have seed beads falling over my floor. So I just took some glossy accents and I just, you know, went around the rim the ledge inside here just went around there really carefully didn't do a lot you don't want to goop out the sides or anything and then I just took that acetate and I took a q-tip so I didn't get any finger marks on it and I just carefully kind of after I filled it with the seed beads first and then I did that glossy accents and the clear acetate and I just kind of pushed it on there and then that's how it looks right here so you can see it's got kind of a shiny that's the acetate cover right there and then these beads aren't going to come out and I like and I didn't fill it up super tight I left a little bit of breathing room because I wanted to be able to shake them because I, li I like that sound so that's just a fun way you can incorporate some of your other elements um, by using the seed beads because I couldn't use them on any of the hemp cording I currently have because the holes are too small and I just um you know, I just wanted to really kind of work with the diameter of the beads that I had the most of at the time. So I wanted to really incorporate those seed beads somehow and that's how I did that. So moving on I think I showed you all the bookmarks. I did, I did. So this is one important thing. So whatever size of a notebook or, you know, whatever journal, whatever it is you're using to, to document your pain, this is how, this is what you want to do. We want to make sure that it is twice the length or the height of this so it has room to dangle down when you wrap it over your insert. And I'll show you what I mean. I just have this wrapped around with some blank insert or pages in here. So I just have it where it's wrapped around right here on this side and then again on the other side of this insert. That way it loops over top of your page and that's what keeps it in there. Now I do have another one I want to share with you really quickly. Um, that's a little bit different. So this is one I made using the elastic cord. You can use this for all kinds of purposes. I chose the white because I really wanted to have that pop of teal. So all I did was I just simply um, I took my scissors and I just made a diagonal like you see right there. You see how it's on the diagonal like that? That way I could take it and I could carefully roll it. Let me zoom in just a little bit. So I'll work over top of my notebook so you can, or my planner so you can see. So you see how it has that angle like that? And I wanted to make sure that I kept the shiny side up. There is two sides to this. One side is shinier. It's just a personal preference. And I just took it and I just rolled it up like this, rolled nice and tight. That way I could fit in, oops. Ah, I've got it all caught here. That way I could fit in this particular bead and it just goes right through it and I'll show you real quick because I don't want to actually make another one of these right now but oops 
and your ends will kind of fray a little bit. I don't mind that because I kind of like that shabby distressed kind of a look. That's just what I like. But if you don't like it, you can probably try to, you know, melt it with your, um, oops, let me get that a little different because I tried to show that in there crooked. You might, you might be able to try to singe it. I don't know. I haven't tried that before. So if that's not a good thing to do, don't do it because <laughs> I don't know. And then, so you can take your pair of your tweezers to kind of um, reach in there and grab it out. If you don't have you know long enough nails to poke in there or whatever and then it just kind of comes out and then it just pulls you just pull it through and then all I did and you see what I mean by the shiny side being up that's the top side and that's the back side and I just pull it up here up out of my way and I just simply took this and just made a simple knot at the very end if I can get it to go on here poke it in like that and just made a little simple knot and then I just tighten it like that and then I just push that down and I repeated that same process on the other end. So that's how I made this one and I'll show you how this one looks when it's in your journal. Now the length of this because it's stretchy I just kind of guessed on it because I, I knew it was going to be kind of stretchy and I like that. So if you're if you're not using a stretchy material you might want to actually measure to be sure or you can also measure your stretchy material. It's up to you. So I'm just going to open this up to here in the middle and I'm just going to simply lay it let me zoom out so you can see. I'm just going to lay it in the middle of my insert like that. And I'm just going to close it and that's it. And then put my band back around and you see you have it sticking up off the top and then you also have it sticking up down the bottom. So that's just another fun way you can use some of the different um, different elastic cordings and whatnot. So now we're going to get right to the tutorial. I'm sorry I'm trying to make this not too long but you know I'm not like the world's fastest crafter <laughs> by any means. So anyway do what I can when I'm hurting. So this is the one I already started off camera and this is what it looks like and I'm using the lighter cording again because I want to kind of make a few with the lighter or natural and that's what this end looks like and I think it just looks really super cute and I just love the pops of teal in there and then this is the other side. Now I've already tied this end off as you can see and I even even when I make both ends I can um, tie this off which let me, get, let me make this first and I'll share with you the tie part. Sorry I don't think I shared that. I've filmed this a couple times and I forgot what part I've said and which part I haven't said, so you have to forgive me. So what I did, I was already picked the beads out because sometimes it takes me a little bit to decide what I want. And, um, it's, and it's fun, I think, to dig through your beads and kind of see. So I just kind of lay out what I think I want it to look like. So since I've already tied this end off, I need to put these on with the last one last. So the one that's going to be on the top, that's how I'm going to string this, these on. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull my bead cap through here. Now I did not try this before I went on camera, so I don't know if I can use this or not. This might be a little bit too, um, might be too narrow. Let me just try to snip this just a little tiny bit, because I did give myself a little bit of extra um, wiggle room, just in case I had trouble, you know, and I need, I like it came un, um, unbound or something like that. I don't think I'm going to get this one in. Bummer. Nope. That one's not going to work. So, this one I know works, so we'll grab this one, because I used this one earlier, so we'll do that. So we'll get this one in. So I'm just going to string this here and I need to kind of get this a little bit wet in my mouth just a second. Now I'm only doing this on the ones that are for me. If I ever make any to send out to somebody in Happy Mail or, or to buy or something, I would never and will never do that with my mouth. I promise you that. This is for me. So that's why I'm doing that. And I'm just going to simply pull this through like that. And I'm just going to grab the next one. Oh, a little trick too I found. It's probably because these are cheaper beads, I'm guessing, because I got them from Walmart really super cheap. Some of the holes weren't all the way punctured through. So I just took this tool I have from We Are Memory Keepers, and I just simply poked it in and just kind of moved it around like this. And that made the holes a little bit wider. I'm sure there are proper tools for this, but, um, you know, I'm not like a bead person, artist or crafter or whatever. So I'm just use the, using the tools that I have, because that's what makes sense to me. So I'm just going to simply bead this in through as well. And then pull that through. And the tweezers work really great if you ever get it, it's caught in the hole or something like that. And I like these because these, these beads are so cute and they have such nice wide holes. Now this one here, oh, I grabbed the wrong bead. Those ones are too big. I need the ones that have that texture. And these beads are so stinking cute. But I just, look at that texture on there. I love it. It looks like you just put snow text or something all over it. I love that. Very shabby looking to me. So let me just get this in fixed. I have a water bottle, just in case somebody's asking, well, how would you do that if it was for somebody else? I have a water bottle I keep. I have a couple water bottles in my room. Spray bottles. And that's what I would do, is I would just squirt the end of it with the water. So, just to put that out there. And I'm just going to see how I put that on there, and it's 
that's the direction I want it. And I'm just going to simply take the end here and I'll zoom you in so you can see. Now I know you can do like box knots and things like that. I found with this particular um, hemp cording, it just stays. It doesn't come undone at all. And I had my, um, my, um, I showed my daughter and she was tugging on it and it would not come undone. So, because I wanted to see if I could just get with just a simple knot like that. So I grabbed my tweezers and because my fingertips aren't strong enough and I just kind of give a really nice tug like that and that makes it where it stays nice and nice and good. So there you go. That's a simple little book charm you can make or be, you know, charm for your books. Now, um, on which, where's the one that I had? Is it this one or yeah, this one here? So on this one here, you'll notice that there is a, a knot at the top of this side and there's not one on here and I wanted to give you an ex uh, show you so you could see why I, I did that. So if I put that knot, that's going to prevent these from sliding up and down. I don't like for them really to slide around on my charm, my bookmark like that because I don't want them to be, I just don't like that. So I put a tie there. Now if you want to leave yours loose, you just don't put a tie there and they're going to slide around. And if you like that, that's totally cool too. Everybody's different. That's what makes this world so great. So just whatever your preference is, but um, I will be tying mine. Um, because this is for me, so I'm just going to go ahead and slip this in here, and I'll show you. So you can tie this before you start the other end. It doesn't make your it doesn't make a difference at all how you um, if you do it now or you know when you first start doing it. Like I mean, when you tie this end and then you are done putting your beads on, you can come and make this knot now and then go to the other side and put the other beads on, or you can do it at the very end like I'm doing. It doesn't make any difference. Just in case somebody might want to know. So let me get this pulled down here. It's going the wrong way. And I'm just going to do just a little quick cinch on this too. So, But this is a really fun project. I've never really messed with beads and stuff too much in my crafting. I've always kind of, um, you know, just kind of added them as accents and different layouts and, you know, mixed media pieces, things like that. But, you know, now that I um, am, you know, having a traveler's notebook to do my um, journaling and stuff in, I want to go ahead and just use that. So... And then there I have a knot now. It's going to stop it from sliding all further down. So that is basically my really quick and easy tutorial um, showing you, oopsie, how I made these different charms for my traveler's notebook. So these are all the ones I've made today. It really doesn't take that much time at all. The longest part was probably me just playing around, deciding which beads I wanted to use, and still um, getting into some of my containers, like for the birdcage and a couple of these little bead cap things here because I still have a lot of my craft stuff still packed up in totes and boxes from our move. So that's the part that took me the longest, but this is really quick and easy. I just listened to some YouTube videos in the background and I just get them done. So um, I don't think I shared in this video because like I said, I've done this a couple times to make it not so long. I um, dumped my beads and stuff. Maybe I told you. I think I did. I'm not going to repeat it because I think I did. Anyway, so thanks so much for watching, you guys. Um, you can find us by using simple materials you can buy at the Dollar Tree or at Walmart, um, big lots, places like that. Obviously, Michael's and, you know, Joann's and Hobby Lobby, all the bigger stores have all these kinds of things. But if you're trying to get some, um, a little bit more on the cheap side, like inexpensive, I mean, because, you know, the, unless you have a really good coupon or something for Michael's or Hobby Lobby, which they do have great deals, too. But if you don't have one of those stores close to you, but you have a Walmart or something like that, Dollar Tree, you can get items like this there because I have all these kind of supplies from there um, as well. Just different brands, of course, but I've picked up tons of different elastic cordings. Um, the hemp twines have all kinds of colors, and you can always get some beads. Some of them may not be as intricate and as cute as these, um, you know, but you can just kind of work with what you have. So this is... Um, um, just my video sharing with you how I'm decorating my um, traveler's notebook that I use to track my pain and my um, kind of journal for all of that making some different charms so I can interchange them out and have something new and something fresh and um, also representing trigeminal neuralgia awareness and you know using the collar teal so if you have any questions or anything like that just go ahead and feel free to leave me a comment in the comment section oh you could also use these for your bibles too you don't have to be a journal or something sketchbooks if, if you just draw you know whatever it is whatever kind of a book you use or whatever these are for mine but you can use uh, my notebook but you can use this and whatever just just adjust the length to twice the height of whatever it is your your book is so thanks so much for watching everybody happy crafting happy planning happy scrapping and for all of my fellow tanners out there watching this video stay strong we're in this together and if you just go on instagram and just put in you know do hashtag trigeminal neuralgia or anything like that you're going to find a ton of people that are on social media who also have what we have and you can make some new connections and some new online support friends if you feel comfortable in doing so so i will see you guys tomorrow for my day three of my trigeminal neuralgia awareness week crafting series bye guys